Hi, I need a haircut. I need a haircut. Yeah. I've had this monitor, the LG 27UL 550, for almost four years now. And I wanted a nicer one because this is something I stare at most of my waking hours on weekdays as a work from home software developer. So early this year, 2025, I started looking around for monitors to replace this with and I found the Asus Pro R 27 inch 5K monitor, which is a cheap alternative to the Apple Studio. And they also have an upcoming 32 inch 6K monitor, which will be a cheaper alternative for the Apple XDR. And last month I was heavily considering, should I wait for the 32 inch? I was at the mall for some errands and then I found the C4 on sale and from its standard retail price of like i think 75k php it was just 48 or 49 so i thought oh no this is just the same price as the 27 inch 5k and i was really curious about using this as a monitor ever since i saw videos of people doing that from four years ago and yeah since they are the same price i thought for the same money you get a bigger screen 42 versus 27 Yes, it has definitely lower pixel density than the 27 inch 5K, but it's OLED and it's 120 Hz. But most importantly, really, it's the size. I mean, I just wanted to experience 42 inch as a monitor. So that's when I decided to, okay, let's give it a try. If I don't like it, I can just use it as my TV, living room TV. And so on that day, I came home with a big TV. Here we are. Now before I can fully utilize this on my MacBook, I have to buy this Cable Matters USB-C to HDMI uh, adapter that enables 4K 120Hz four two two ten bit because if I don't, I can only get 4K 60Hz, which is not bad, but I wouldn't be utilizing the full capability of this monitor. And I have ProMotion on this laptop, so my eyes can easily tell the difference between 60Hz and 120Hz. So this Cable Matters adapter is product ID 201488. When I looked online, most of what I found actually was more on buying this Cable Matters adapter and then flashing a custom firmware on it. But luckily when I searched for this adapter on Amazon, they already had a Mac OS specific version which Cable Matters flashed the custom firmware uh, from factory. So I'll put the link on the description for this specific adapter. Now on to my experience. I've been using this for three weeks now, not even a month, but I'm excited to share with you my initial experience with it. So first things first, I think it's the desk depth. Uh, it's very important. I'm running a 70 centimeters deep uh, desk. Now this primarily depends on your eyesight, but I think there's a minimum to it. And I, for me, I think the minimum is 70 cm. Okay, next realization is uh, to fully utilize a monitor this big, a screen this big, you have to have something like a Fancy Zones app, which is for Windows. So I had to look for an alternative in macOS and I found BentoBox. Before on my normal size screen, 27 inch, I was using Rectangle app, which I made a video about also, by the way. And I really like that. I've been rocking that setup for many years, but the workflow on that app just doesn't work really well for an oversized screen like this. Now with this app, you can fully customize the zones on your screen that you can snap your apps into. You can really make your own partitions on your screen that works for your workflow. Because I mean, depending on your job, depending on your workflow, the windows and the apps and everything that you need is gonna be different. And it's really nice because by just holding option, you can combine the grids that you made. And I think this app made me make the most out of this big monitor. This app is not free, but it's cheap and it has a 40 day trial. So you can try it out first before you commit. And the next thing is I turned off all OLED burn-in protection settings that are available on the TV's menu, but I didn't get the service remote to disable the dimming on the service menu because I don't want to spend another thing for the remote and then 
Apparently, it voids the warranty. I don't want to do that just yet. Maybe soon. For now, the dimming doesn't really bother me a lot because when I notice it, I just switch space on macOS, which moves the whole screen and changes every pixel. So it disables the dimming and then it goes back to normal again. My stance before was if you have a laptop, just leave it open on your desk. Because the screen is just a waste if you don't use it. And you can use the trackpad instantly if you want a trackpad instead of a mouse and things like that. But with this setup now, the screen is plenty enough. So I don't feel the need to keep the laptop open just for the extra screen. Uh, sometimes I just crack it open a bit so I can still use the touch ID. Okay, I think we've reached the end, at least for now. I'm definitely gonna make more videos about my experience with this TV slash monitor. In my experience, it's one of the upgrades that really made a huge difference on my day-to-day -day workflow. If the idea of using an LG C4 as a monitor has ever crossed your mind before, I say just give it a try, and if you don't like it, I'm pretty sure you're gonna like it as a TV because this thing, oh my god, watching movies on it is just so good. I'll definitely make more videos about this, so tune in. Thanks. See you next one.